In this demonstration, we will explore a scenario where a data governance manager in the financial services sector is responsible for implementing data cataloging and governance using CDGC. We will walk you through the complete CDGC journey from the initial planning phase to the final delivery phase. Use case. Business analyst Bob is tasked with generating a security report encompassing transactions processed within the corporate banking services department. Bob was surprised to find that there is no centralized repository providing a unified view of the organization data, data lineage, policies, and regulations. To ensure compliance and maintain data integrity, Bob requires a comprehensive cataloging and governance solution. Implementing such a system will streamline data operations, enhance compliance, and improve overall data governance. Bob begins to consolidate the requirements from the business stakeholders and reaches out to his management for approval to implement a data cataloging and governance tool. After reviewing the request, the IT or implementation team evaluated several solutions and selected Informatica CDGC, Cloud Data Governance and Catalog, as the most suitable tool to meet this requirement. Informatica CDGC was chosen for its robust features, including automated data discovery, comprehensive data lineage tracking, and advanced metadata management. The platform's ability to integrate seamlessly with existing data sources and its support for policy enforcement and compliance monitoring made it an ideal choice for centralizing and governing the organization's data assets effectively. IT or implementation team, along with the business stakeholders, proceeds with the following steps. CDGC journey. We will be using this data governance journey as a guideline for implementing this use case. Plan phase. Strategize vision to set the stage for a successful data governance roadmap. Identify critical data elements and align them with business objectives to ensure actionable outcomes. Establish measurable goals that promote data integrity and compliance. Prepare phase. Assemble your team and business and technical resources for data governance success. Develop roles and responsibilities tailored to your governance framework, ensuring all stakeholders understand their parts. Create a training plan to enhance data literacy across the organization. Discover phase. Map your data landscape to gain valuable insights. Use tools to scan and identify data across different environments, enhancing visibility. This comprehensive view helps prioritize data issues and integration needs. Data quality phase. Add data quality to improve the data accuracy. Implement continuous monitoring and validation processes to maintain high quality data standards. Employ data quality metrics to evaluate performance and guide improvements. Cure phase. Organize and classify data. Develop a metadata management strategy to facilitate better searchability and retrieval. Use data cataloging to improve user access and control over data. Enrich phase. Add context to data to unlock its true potential. Integrate external data sources to enrich existing datasets, providing a broader perspective for analysis. Apply advanced analytics and machine learning models to derive deeper insights. Dashboard phase. For insightful decision-making, design interactive dashboards that provide real-time data updates, allowing leaders to make informed decisions quickly. Customize visualizations to cater to various user needs and enhance data interpretability. Rollout phase to embed data governance practices into your organization's DNA. Implement a phased rollout strategy to integrate data governance seamlessly with existing systems. Foster a culture of data-centric decision-making through ongoing education and support. Plan phase. Now, let's jump into the planning phase, where the real groundwork happens. This is where we'll define our use case, gather our admin squad, and fine-tune roles to match our needs. Next up, we'll organize our user groups and stakeholders, laying the foundation. Identify admins. The first step of the planning phase is to identify admins who would serve as the backbone of our project, entrusted with the responsibility of guiding our team toward our objectives. For this banking use case, 
We have structured our administrative team with four distinct roles to enhance our management capabilities. The first individual serves as the lead administrator on the administrator page, responsible for customizing roles, creating user groups, and managing other essential functionalities. Additionally, we have appointed three other administrators, each with specialized duties, one to manage and maintain business data, another to oversee data quality assurance, and a third to supervise catalog sources. This third administrator is uniquely responsible for both the creation and implementation of the sources. Create slash customize user roles. The second step in the planning phase entails the creation or utilization of existing roles, ensuring that appropriate permissions are granted to both users and administrators. This step precedes the creation of administrators as assigning roles is a prerequisite for user creation in IDMC. Create user groups. Following the establishment of roles, the subsequent step involves creating user groups and facilitating the categorization of users based on their respective roles. The recommended approach for role assignment begins with the creation of roles, followed by the creation of user groups and the assignment of roles to these groups. Finally, users are configured and added to user groups. Set up stakeholders. The final step of the planning phase encompasses identifying and establishing stakeholders who will serve as primary points of contact for both business and technical assets extracted and configured within CDGC. For this stage, two distinct roles and corresponding groups have been established, data steward and data owner. Users have been assigned to these groups, serving as primary points of contact for both business and technical assets extracted during the process. These designated individuals will play crucial roles in facilitating communication and coordination between stakeholders and the CDGC platform, ensuring effective management and governance of extracted assets. Prepare phase. In the prepare phase of this endeavor, our focus shifts to the configuration of a secure agent integral for metadata extraction and hosting services. Additionally, we will embark on creating or customizing existing workflows, establishing a data classification system to categorize the extracted metadata, and finally generating business data to enrich our technical metadata repository. Install and configure secure agent. The procedural steps encompass identifying the suitable type of secure agent tailored to your organization's needs, followed by its installation. Once installed, the focus shifts to configuring and enabling services essential for your specific use case. For this demonstration, we have opted for a Linux version of the secure agent and have enabled data governance and catalog, data integration, and data quality services. Create or customize workflows. During this phase, our focus lies on crafting or tailoring workflow processes. These workflows define the precise steps that CDGC must adhere to when publishing newly created or modified business or technical objects. The following is a simple walkthrough of the workflow configuration. We have the option to configure or customize pre-existing workflows from the cloud application integration service. The following single step process consists of one mandatory step, the approver step, and one optional step, the edit user step. Users assigned to these roles must adhere to this process when publishing newly created or modified business or technical objects based on the configured choices. We will be using the same to create an event in MCC. We can create a workflow event in MCC, which defines what triggers a process. For this demonstration, we configured an event that will trigger the workflow process when a new business term is being published. This is the stage where we specify the details, including the name of the workflow event, its trigger conditions, and the applicable asset types for which it should activate. And in the workflow page, we link the process in CAI and configured task outcomes, as well as assigned stakeholder roles that will work at each step. With the workflows in place, 
we are well prepared to proceed with our future tasks and operations, ensuring a structured and efficient approach to our CDGC implementation. Define classifications. During this step, we establish data classifications to systematically categorize the extracted metadata. For this demonstration, we will utilize classifications such as address line one, routing number, email, and others to categorize the metadata extracted from our internal banking resources. Define business data. This is the step where we generate business data to enrich our technical metadata repository. Business assets allow you to describe why you use the data, where you use the data, and how you use the data to make business decisions. Business assets provide context to your data using relationships with other business assets and by using simpler representations of technical data. For this demonstration, we have meticulously curated the following business data specifically tailored to suit our use case within the banking sector. Glossary. A glossary is a collection of business-friendly terms. Relationships made to and from a glossary asset contribute to better governance across your organization. Certain types of glossary assets can be linked to data sets and data elements to help clarify their purpose in your organization. In data governance and catalog, you can create the following types of glossary assets. Glossary domain. A glossary asset of the domain type refers to a collection of business concepts and activities that can be grouped for a specific function or requirement. A domain is a subject matter area under which many terms can be organized. You can use a glossary domain to assign semantic and business context to an actual business concept. For example, Financial services is used to define what the term is. And track related objects like policies, business areas, domains, and subdomain it is associated with. This domain is used to track all the finance related business terms and subdomains. Glossary subdomain. A glossary asset of the subdomain type refers to a concept or activity that constitutes a specific business function or requirement. A domain is divided into subdomains to help organize business terms and metrics. You can use a glossary subdomain to assign semantic and business context to an actual business concept. For example, transaction data is used to define what the term is. And track related objects like policies, business areas, domains and subdomain it's associated with. This subdomain is used to track all the transaction-related business terms. Glossary business term. A glossary asset of the business term type can be used to capture a business definition that is used in your organization. Most business terms tend to be realized as data elements and can be used to indicate that different data elements represent the same concept, whatever the name they have in each table. For example, Transaction ID is used to define what the term is. And track related objects like columns, policies, business areas, domains, and subdomain it's associated with. Glossary metric. A glossary asset of the metric type refers to the definition of the measurement of a business result. This measurement is typically a numerical indicator of business success. You can use a metric asset to assign semantic and business context to an actual business measurement. For example, expected loss is used to define what the metric term is about. And track related objects like columns, policies, business areas, domains and subdomains it's associated with. System. A system asset represents a recognizable location or application that typically contains multiple data sets. In a system asset, the system name is often more business friendly than the technical names used for technical assets. The system name allows the business users who create and manage the data to easily identify the asset. Process. A process asset allows you to document important business activities so that the activity can be contextualized through relationships. 
These activities allow business users to record the key reasons why they consume data. Processes are typically structured as a parent process using the recognized name of the activity, with a series of child process steps that explain the key stages involved in executing that activity. Each process object can have its own set of relationships to explain key metadata associations. For example, Helic application process captures and defines the process flow for the Helic application and its related objects. Policy. A policy asset represents an internal collection of rules and guidance on how to conduct business and manage data. They may be inspired by company goals, external regulations, or commercial agreements. For example, terms of use are used to track and define all the data that is subject to specific terms of use based on its contents and related consent. Project. A project asset represents a collection of activities that are planned and organized to achieve a particular set of objectives. For example, core banking system upgrade captures and defines what the project is about, who is working on it, and to what other objects this project is related to or what other objects will fall under this project. AI model. An AI model asset represents the essential parameters of an AI model. These parameters also include the environment where the model is run, the input parameters and the output data, and the business purpose and rules for the model. AI models provide insights for many activities so that you can make decisions faster and easier or provide prediction modeling. Example. The following is the fraud prediction system designed to proactively identify and mitigate fraudulent activities. Business area. A business area asset represents a department or business function with certain assigned responsibilities in the wider organization. For example, the corporate banking services business area used to define what the business area does and track related objects. Legal entity. A legal entity asset captures corporate entities whether these are part of the customer's own group of companies or trusted partners and vendors that can be used to make relationships to other business assets to provide context. For example, XYZ Legal LTD captures and defines corporate entity XYZ Legal LTD and its related objects like geography and regulations. Geography. A geography asset captures areas, regions, or countries relevant to where your organization operates. You can use a geography asset to show how different business assets are relevant to different locations. For example, the geography Sun Belt region serves as a defining parameter to establish and monitor relationships with other business objects falling within this region. Regulation. A regulation asset type allows you to document the important clauses of a major legislation. It is a key driver of internal policies that direct how an organization conducts its business. For example, the Basel III Accord serves as a defining framework outlining the scope and specifications of the regulation. It also tracks the objects across CDGC where this regulation will be applied. Discover phase. In the discover phase, our focus is on creating source connections, extracting metadata, and establishing lineage. Create source connections. Utilizing connections, we define the parameters necessary to establish a connection to the source from which we intend to extract metadata. For this demonstration, we have configured several Oracle database connections, and this is one of those connections. Source extraction. Employing the connections established in the previous step, we will proceed to configure the catalog sources within MCC. These sources will be utilized to extract metadata, profile data, categorize information, establish relationships, and integrate glossaries.
To create a resource in MCC, we simply click on New and select the desired resource type from which we aim to extract data. In this instance, we will opt for Oracle as the chosen resource type. For this demonstration, we have pre-configured an Oracle catalog source. This source has been given an appropriate name, ensuring it relates to the source being scanned. Furthermore, we have specified the connection previously created to facilitate seamless integration. Moving on to the Configuration tab, we are presented with options to configure parameters for metadata extraction, profiling, data classification, relationship discovery, glossary association, and schedules. Additionally, filter options are available to specify the objects from the source to which these features should be applied. The extracted and associated object stats can be viewed in MCC. The following are for metadata extraction. These are for glossary association. Next is setting up lineage. In our banking use case, data migration from an online banking source to a core banking target is facilitated with the process tailored to the transaction type. This migration is accomplished using an IICS, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, mapping. Once the source, target, and mapping layers are scanned, the connections associated with each layer will be extracted. We can see these connections under the Connection Assignments tab in MCC. These connections are then manually mapped accordingly to the right endpoints. Upon completing this mapping process, the lineage of data movement can be visualized within CDGC, providing a clear and comprehensive understanding of the data flow from source to target, as depicted here. We can also see the technical objects associated business and data quality objects by selecting the respective objects from the overlays located here. From overlays, select business term, validity type DQ rules, and certification. The following details will be displayed. Business lineage. Business Assets Display Business Lineage You can view Business Lineage for data set and system assets. For example, if you are viewing the lineage for a data set, you can see how data flows between data sets and their associated parent system assets. Business analysts typically use Business Lineage to understand the source of the data and to ensure that the data is coming from a trusted source. The following image displays the Business Lineage for a sample business data set. The following is the business lineage. The business lineage has been configured based on the previously demonstrated technical lineage. This was accomplished by establishing systems, datasets, and data elements that correspond to their equivalent catalog sources, tables, and column-based technical assets. You can develop business lineage by omitting tables and columns that may not provide value to business users. For example, let's create a business lineage for this technical lineage. To do that, we first have to create a system and data set for the catalog source and table respectively. We can create the system from the catalog source overview page. Fill out the details for the system to be created. Similarly, we can create a dataset from the Table Overview page. Go to Table Overview page and click on Create Dataset button. Fill out the details and add only those data elements that are necessary for the business users. In this case, we have omitted the data element, transaction underscore date and we only wanted to show the lineage with these three data elements to the business users. This will remove technicality from the lineage and just show how the data is being flowed between systems. Similarly, we have created systems and datasets for other catalog sources from the technical lineage. 
Now, we have to create relationships between these data sets for the business lineage to show up. Let's now go to the data set that will source for the current data set and create a lineage relationship. Doing the same for others, we will see the following business lineage. Next is adding relationships. A relationship between assets shows how the assets relate to one another. When data from a source system is ingested into the catalog, data governance and catalog can automatically create relationships among the technical assets of that source system. You can connect business assets to relevant technical assets using different types of relationships. The relationships tab of an asset page displays the relationships between the selected asset and other business and technical assets in the data governance and catalog. For example, we can see how a column object is linked to a table, columns, data quality rules, and calculations. Cured and enrich data phase. This is the phase where we curate the data classifications and glossaries associated to the extracted objects. Cured suggestions. Once the data classification and glossary association tasks are executed in MCC, you can either accept or reject the business associations and data classifications suggested by CDGC to the technical assets, or you can associate glossaries and data classifications manually to the technical assets based on your requirement. The following are the recommendations from Claire for glossaries, data classification, and Claire generated data classifications. The following is the image showing these CDGC associations and Claire generated data classification. We can reject these business terms and data classifications if they are not suitable for the technical asset, or we can add specific business terms and classifications. Certifying assets. The stakeholders of the technical assets can certify them. A stakeholder's endorsement of a technical asset as valid holds significant weight achieved through the act of certifying the asset. This certification process serves as a crucial mechanism, instilling confidence among users regarding the reliability and accuracy of the asset. By certifying an asset, stakeholders affirm its integrity, usability, and compliance with established standards and regulations. Bulk import slash export feature. Bulk import export feature offers a streamlined approach to manage the curation process within the user interface. Instead of navigating through individual objects, users have the option to perform bulk operations, facilitating efficiency and time saving. With this feature, users can extract a large volume of objects, curate them collectively, and subsequently import them back into CDGC in a seamless manner. Data quality phase. In this phase, we will check the quality of the data using data quality rules. There are two types of data quality objects in CDGC, data quality rule occurrence and data quality rule template. Data quality rule occurrence can be configured to only run on a single data element. 
data quality rule template can be configured to run on all the columns associated with the specified glossary. For a quick walkthrough, we will use this data quality rule template. The following template serves as a structured framework for defining the rules governing the evaluation of data elements or columns associated with a specified glossary. We can use existing rules from CDQ, Cloud Data Quality, or create them. Using this data quality rule template, we can automate the creation of data quality rule occurrences for the columns associated with the specified glossary. In this case, we are checking to see what percentage of the values of the account type are null, and from the results, we can see that none are null. Dashboard phase. In this phase, using all the metadata we extracted and curations made, we will create dashboards. A dashboard is a customizable interface that gives you an overview of the key assets and activities in your organization. You can use the dashboard to quickly access and analyze assets and activities that are relevant to you. We have already created the following dashboard for this demonstration. My dashboard shows where we can look for help getting started and holds key calls to action like current tickets. The Clear Activity widget shows all recommendations made by Informatica's AI engine. This includes recommendations for glossary associations and classifications. Additional dashboards that focus specifically on data governance quality concerns and other assets. Use case continuation. Once the implementation is done, the following are the steps Bob follows to get the required data. Business analyst Bob initiates his search for the data he requires by accessing CDGC. Although he knows the type of data he needs, he lacks knowledge regarding its specific location within CDGC. Consequently, Bob begins his exploration by searching for related business terms. These business terms are strategically tagged to extracted columns within CDGC, imbuing them with contextual business significance. Identifying transactions data as his focus, business analyst Bob navigates to the financial services domain within CDGC. Within this domain, he explores the subdomains housing various business terms and metrics relevant to financial data within their department or organization. After thorough examination, Bob identifies a specific subdomain appearing to contain the requisite business terms and metrics associated with transactions data. Upon clicking on the identified subdomain, Bob navigates through the hierarchy to explore any related business terms or metrics. He discovers the transaction ID, business term, and proceeds to investigate its relationships. Within the relationships section, Bob observes that there are seven associated objects, two columns, one project, one business area, two policies, and one subdomain. Bob clicks on the column object transaction ID. And from the column object, Bob identifies the associated dataset and proceeds to investigate further. He navigates to the lineage tab tailored for business users to examine the business lineage. However, Bob also desires to delve deeper and verify the catalog sources from which these columns are extracted. To accomplish this, Bob returns to the column object. And from the lineage tab, Bob proceeds to investigate the data flow into the core banking resource by accessing the lineage section within CDGC. He discovers that the data originates from the online banking web portal resource. Navigating to the online banking web portal transactions table. Bob observes data quality checks have been performed to validate the account ID column. Satisfied with the source's integrity based on the data quality checks and certification of both the source and target tables, Bob concludes that the data flow is reliable and trustworthy. Bob meticulously collects all pertinent information, including the catalog source name of the column and policy details. 
He then initiates communication with the respective stakeholders to obtain further insights into the terms of use and the requisite procedures for legally accessing the information. This proactive approach ensures compliance with regulations and facilitates the acquisition of necessary permissions for accessing the data. We would like to hear from you. Thank you.